Hi, I'm Dr. Seema Sharma and I am Director Founder of Srishti Fem Care. Uh, we have lots of uh, pregnant patients coming and we con as a routine uh, subscribe vitamin D supplements to them and there are a lot of questions about how these supplements should be taken and how else, uh, what else can be done to improve their vitamin D uh, metabolism in the body. So by means of this video, I want to tell you a few things about vitamin D in our body. Well, uh, first and foremost, a lot of people get confused. What is vitamin D3 and what is vitamin D2? How is it different? What should we be taking? So the answer is, uh, well, vitamin D3 is essentially from an animal source. Uh, we get it from an animal source and D2 is a plant source. And uh, there is a possibility that your doctor may initially give you uh, vitamin uh, D2 because it rises quickly in the body and uh, for sustenance you know because something stays in our system for longer we usually prescribe D3 uh, but this was just to give you a theoretical background it is okay if your doctor has just prescribed you one particular type and D3 is the more common type which is available in our country now uh, people usually ask me doctor should I be taking it in the morning or evening whether I should be taking it with meals or how should I be taking it so the answer is uh, vitamin D is, uh, well, it's a fat uh, dissolving vitamin. So it is always advisable that you take it with the largest meal of the day. If you take a big breakfast, take it with breakfast. If you take a big lunch, take it with lunch. But it should have some amount of fat in your diet for it to get absorbed properly. Um, you should just not be taking it on empty stomach or with plain water. So that is why in older times people used to say, uh, take it with milk, but if you're taking it with milk, then you make sure that it's a whole mi whole cream milk So there is enough amount of fat in your milk uh, that will have to help absorb uh, absorption of vitamin D Then uh, also if uh, usually people are taking multiple supplements So if you've been taking say your calciums or your omega-3 you should take them all together so calcium and vitamin D uh, increase each other's absorption and also uh, omega-3 will also help in the absorption of vitamin, 3, so, uh, vitamin D. So if you're taking them all together, it's always better for the system. Iron and general multivitamins have absolutely no correlation with this. So, you know, you could take it either ways. So what, essentially what I have said is you take it with your meal and you take it with calcium and uh, omega-3 supplements, which will help uh, better absorption. Morning and evening does not matter. Uh, it depends on your schedule if you're a uh, like I said if you're a morning person you could have it in morning and if you want to take it at night there is otherwise no difference in absorption with the time of the day but usually people who work uh, tend to have a good breakfast so uh, that's why we always advise have it in the morning with a glass of um, whole full cream uh, milk then uh, another thing is which form of vitamin D is better uh, do we take it uh, like a tablets? Do we take it like a liquid? Do we take injectables? So well, the answer is uh, we must understand that vitamin D uh, levels are variable in everybody. There is one a normal range which your doctor can tell you if you've got a test done. Uh, then there is an insufficiency whereas you're close to border but you're still the levels are low. And there is one deficiency where is like a gross decrease in the vitamin D level in your system. So uh, it depends on how much vitamin D supplementation you are looking at. For most people, oral absorption is enough. Oral tablets are enough. They are cheap, easily available, and there is not much problem in storage. Then there is a newer form, which is a liquid form. There is a 5 ml bottle, which is available, and it will give you a lot of uh, vitamin D, and they say, well, absorption is better. I don't deny the absorption might be slightly better because the technology of production is such that uh, the absorption might be better but it is much more expensive as compared to the tablet so uh, you have to see and some people don't like the taste and some people can't take the liquid form of it they find taking a tablet easier so a tablet or a liquid essentially is a choice then comes whether do we need injectables IV uh, vitamin D again as I said if you have too much deficiency of vitamin D those injections might make sense but these injections are painful and they should not be taken routinely. If you can manage with tablets, that's well, that's about it. Uh, then another thing a lot of people ask me is, uh, what do I do to increase my vitamin D when, when they see the levels are uh, quite bad? And especially, uh, you know, earlier we used to say India has a lot of sunlight, so there is not much problem with 
uh, vitamin D, but that's exactly the point. The sun is so harsh that we can't really go out in sun uh, and make vitamin D in our system. So we need to rely on either food or, in, or supplements to have our vitamin D in place. Uh, if your vitamin D is borderline low, most people have some issues with bones, the osteoporosis comes early, bone pains come early, uh, you know, babies can have rickets or, you know, bossing off their forehead. Uh, and if the deficiency is too much, you know, you would also have problems with your muscles, which we call as a myopathy. So it is an ongoing sequence of events that uh, from normal to deficiency, people have various symptoms. Um, so, you know, how much time you need to take your vitamin D depends on how much is the deficiency. So what you can do as a person to improve your vitamin D is, uh, well, we say 20 minutes of sunlight uh, between 10 to 2. Uh, a.m. in the morning, I mean 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 p.m. Uh, when you've not been wearing clothes or not applied sunscreen on major part of your skin like your hands or your legs. If, you, if you're if you going in sun fully clothed then this has got no meaning. So uh, 20 minutes of a walk in good sunlight when nothing is applied on your skin and you allow the sun rays or the UV rays to uh, act uh, on the surface or on a, on, a, uh, on a substance under your skin uh, which will help transform into a vitamin D might help. Then there are certain foods, um, well people say milk but you know a normal milk, a glass of milk 250 ml has only got 100 uh, international units of vitamin D. But then if you take fortified milk, there are certain foods which are, which, which have in addition vitamin D inserted into them. Uh, it's a man-made attempt to improve the vitamin D supplements. So um, those are better. So there are certain um, juices, especially orange juice or uh, you know milk, which is fortified in my vitamin D. So if you regularly take those, probably those will help you better. So um, I guess with foods wise, seafood is very rich in vitamin D. And one and another word of caution I want to tell you is, well, deficiency is common, but you know don't go on and on taking these supplements by yourself. Uh, take it for as long as your doctor prescribes because. Uh, hypervitaminos, hypervitaminosis is a very known entity. It can uh, cause uh, uh, kidney damage. It can cause um, uh, you know weight gain and um, increased amount of calcium in your system, uh, which can be actually detrimental uh, in many aspects. So, like any other supplement that I've been cautioning, that please don't go on and on with it. Same is the case with vitamin D, because I have heard a lot of uh, uh, you know patients will tell you. Uh, which is okay uh, for a vast majority but then there are certain very diligent people who are otherwise not deficient for them you know overdosing might just um, harm the system so be careful so that's about uh, all for today thank you so much